Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen Williams, founder and president of thecreditrepairshop.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about medical bills. I'm going to break them down all the way to what uh, the bureaus can do, what the collection agencies can do. I'm going to talk about my own uh, situation with my wife, with her medical situation. Um, and then I'm going to end it, close it out with something motivational to get you moving forward for the day. So the one of the number one things that I see in my office, other than student loans, is medical people with medical bills on their credit reports. People, and you know, just saying medical bills on the credit report, it does. It's not just ending there. We're talking about this is highly emotional because when people uh, got these medical bills, there was a lot of pain involved in it if they had a, a situation where they were in the hospital or they had an accident or a child got hurt or someone got sick uh it, there's a lot that goes into it and that's what i from looking at stuff and even with what happened with my family and i'll talk about that later is that what happens is that when it i see that when it comes to medical bills that people have a way of separating themselves and just like whatever happens, happens. Because when you lose your health, when you're not healthy, uh, people go into a different mode. And it go, the mode is, I don't care about money, I just care about my health. And I see that with people I saw with my own family. And then on the other flip side is that there is a financial pain. When the person makes it and they get healthy or the family member gets healthy, then the financial pain comes up and the awareness on that pops up uh, heavy and it's a big burden on, on most people. And then they go into a depression type phase and everybody lives through depression in different ways. Some people just can't do anything. Some people can move through life, but they uh, don't feel good and they hide their depression and then all of a sudden they boil over and, and something happens and then uh, it's revealed that the person was depressed the whole time. And then the reason why people feel that way and go into depression is because they feel like no one is really on their side. Uh, if it's someone that has worked hard and then they got sick and then all of a sudden they can't go to work, uh, they're not able to pay their bills, they have high medical bills, they could have a feeling that no one is really on their side and that works in the further depression where the person just feels like, you know, everything bad is happening to me, it's like a snowball, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And But there are options to dealing with medical bills and I'm going to tell you how I deal with them with my customers and it, I think it'll help you uh, be able to s figure out a solution if you find yourself dealing with medical bills regardless if they're a collection or if they're still with the uh, medical provider that you uh, that you got services with. Uh, but real quickly I want to talk about my wife's uh, situation. Uh, she had uh, C she's got COPD, but s there's some other things that happened that affected her heart. And, and about five years ago, she was put into the hospital where my wife could have died if we didn't get her to the hospital. Her left side of her heart was enlarged, and we, you know, they found out what it was, and uh, she has to be on oxygen 24/7. And there's also medication that she has to be on. And just one of the medications that uh, she's on costs, I think now it, when we first started, it was six thousand a month, and it went to seven thousand. I think now it's eight thousand dollars a month. So you're talking about for just just this one medication that she uses to control her uh, heart from you know the the pressures. You're talking about ninety six thousand dollars a year for just that one medication. And then we have the, the oxygen, we have, there's other medications that she on, oh, that she's on. Time. There's uh, there's uh, uh, appointments that she has to go to twice a year where they actually check 
uh, I think it's called an echo, her heart to make sure everything is going right. And those things, when those, when she has to do those, I believe that they're two to four thousand dollars each. And and when she was put in the hospital, I remember looking at the bill and looking at the portion that we were responsible for and what the insurance took care of. And just luckily, I had picked an insurance where we paid more for the insurance because we we're, we're older now. And I was like, well, just in case something was to happen to us, and I didn't know something was going to happen. But I was like, I'd rather pay more per month because if something was to come up, we're going to pay less. And if I didn't pick that insurance, we would have had been hit with a $35,000 bill. And I think the bill that we got hit with was only $4,000 at that time for her for being in the hospital so uh yes we're fortunate that uh we are able to afford uh the medical care for my wife and that's why we're big proponents of people being able to have access to health care because if you don't have health care these medical bills will pile up you got to pay you know people have to pay something towards medical but i think that all of us together uh, if everyone is paying into a system, it allows the uh, medical services to be uh, paid, you know, doctors and hospitals to be able to be uh, uh, taken care of for their expenses and for their profits that they need to make for providing the services for us. So things will change in the future, but, you know, we're, what we have right now is uh, I'm going to help you out with the situation with what we're uh what what most people are experiencing right now when it comes to medical bills and so the first thing that you uh should do uh just so your medical bills are not going going to hold you back if you need to use your credit for anything is that your medical history cannot be placed on your credit reports and um i've seen where now the hospitals or the doctors are they're doing something different to uh, not disclose, because they could actually disclose your ish, your medical condition by the way that they bill you with the name of the hospital or the uh, name of the procedure on the medical d document. Like, uh, like there's a service I I had a colonoscopy, and in the name of their uh, uh, in the name of their company, they have the the service that they provide so if they bill you with that they're actually breaking a law because they're disclosing uh, your your medical history they can it's just, it's weird it's a technicality but they can't do that and we see it all the time where on the credit reports they're accidentally disclosing people's medical history or condition by the way that they're billing on the credit report the way they put on the way that they put their information on the credit report, they're accidentally disclosing. So what they've started doing now to not disclose the medical history or and when they are doing the medical bills is they'll put the doctor's name or they'll put the hospital on there. So that, that was what they're doing now. And then if they don't collect the money, what they do is they go to they hire outside collection agencies they rarely sell them to collection agencies now they'll hire a company and then that company will put their name on there as the collection on there but the problem with that is that when they do that and you start to look at what is their legal uh what is the legal obligation to that debt collector with, for those medical bills is that it puts them into a catch-22 and I this is something that happens in my office a lot so uh, we we do this all the time when you ask the debt collector about the breakdown of uh, the services because you have a right when someone just says you owe for this bill then you sh you have a right to say okay first tell me your relationship with me with this bill okay you were hired by the hospital to collect this uh medical bill that i have okay i want to break down of the services right there the debt collector is not 
allowed to get that information. And what they've been telling people to do is to log into your portal and you'll see a breakdown of your service. They'll tell you all these different things. If they're coming after you for the money, they have to tell you or they have to send it back to the doctor uh, or to the hospital, which is what they're going to do likely. Or they might keep trying to move forward. But if you if you do it enough, they're going to send it back because they're not uh, they're on, they've only been hired and they don't want to deal with anything that's going to break the law. So if you just keep challenging them to send you the information because you're dealing with them. If they're saying that they're coming after you for the bill, then you have to deal with them. Because if you call the hospital about the bill, they're going to send you to the debt collector. So that means that the debt collector has to give you the information. They can't give you the information. So what they'll do is they'll send it back to the hospital and then you can deal with the hospital. Now let me tell you what you do when you deal with the hospital. Because before it gets to a debt collector, every hospital has a collection division where they'll give you the opportunity to make payments directly to them. Directly to them without going to a debt collector. So now when it when if they send it back to the uh, hospital which they'll do 99 percent of the time but even if they don't then you need to move forward on a solution and the way that we do it in my office and the way that you should do it is you need to break we do what's called a breakdown are these debts from the deductibles that you had or are are they a total bill because you didn't have insurance uh, are there any problems with your IDs not matching your ID card not matching my wife and I went through this we had got a, a bill for her for I think about 2200 2500 bucks and it was just solely because the ID cards had changed even though we were with the same insurance company when they gave us the new cards it changed the ID number uh, you need to make sure on the bill that there's no over billing because this stuff can happen all the time uh, there, there could be over billings. You got to make sure that there's no out of network billings on your medical bills. Um, one of the, uh, you know, it could be where you were, uh, had a bill, you were out of town and you went to a hospital that was out of your network. You had a, an accident or something, or you were in an accident and they took you to the nearest hospital rather than taking you to your, uh, to a hospital that your insurance uh, considers in network then you got out of network unauthorized this happened to my wife in her recent uh, uh, she was put into the hospital because she had came down uh, with a virus and uh, when we had took a trip to Florida and we all of us got sick my grandson my son-in-law my uh, daughter and I was sick and my wife got sick but with her condition she can't get sick she her uh, heart pressure had went up into the 140s without her even moving she was sitting still and it was at 140 that's heart attack range you get to 140 when you're jogging uh, or running uh, you know in a sprint that's when people get to 140 so we got her to the hospital and one of the bills billings that they tried to push over on us and my wife is big on she looks at everything when it comes to our medical and uh the doctor tried to push something out to someone that was not in the network they cannot do that it, <laughs> we're sit we're in the hospital that's in our network all of the doctors that we're using is in our network and then they're going to bill out to someone that's not in our network uh they can't do that that and my wife got on them and they xed out that entire bill so you, we break down all of that and there's and you want to make sure so you can see what you're dealing with and then if you are able to uh you can uh ask the uh, uh collector if you're still dealing with the collector or the hospital can you do a settlement and that's where you'll do a lump sum uh, settlement. We just got one of our clients. They owed six thousand. Uh, they were able to come up with twenty two hundred dollars for a settlement to just have it paid in full, uh, and it doesn't even show on the credit reports or anything that was paid for less. Uh, we all know that the the hospitals inflate the uh, rates when it comes to us as uh, patients, but when they're dealing with insurance companies, they have a, a rate that 
they will pay for services that's already negotiated. So insurance companies paid less. So it's just like you're negotiating just like an insurance company. And you can get a, a one-time settlement uh, and pay it in full at a very good discount. Uh, usually 50% or less that you can get them, just depending on the hospital. Uh, the next thing is you can set up a payment plan. E e even with the debt collectors, you can set up a payment plan. If they sent kicked it back to the hospital, you can set up a payment plan also with them. The other thing that you should look for, and this happened with a client about eight years ago, he was put into the hospital, uh, had pneumonia, and uh, had he has severe uh, asthma, and his bill was over fifty thousand dollars. And uh, we had looked around, and there were some uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, some of them are churches. Some of them are just nonprofit organizations that will pay. Uh, certain types of medical bills. I mean, it, it, they're all over the place. All you have to do is look for them. And sometimes if you know the, if you ask the hospital, uh, do they have any nonprofit organizations or church organizations that help people with their medical bills? And what they do is they put it into a, an evaluation process and then they'll say if they're going to pay it or not. And I'm pretty sure that they're doing negotiation, but they do this just you know, from the kindness of their heart, they paid his entire bill over. It was fifty some thousand dollars. Paid the entire bill, and uh, we've seen this happen with other customers where, when we just notified them of this, they called the hospital and was like, "Why didn't? Why don't y'all even just tell people about this?" And it's because they don't want people to take advantage of the system. But these uh, options are out there. So uh, if you run into that. Uh, these are the, this is the way that we handle dealing with medical bills this right here this is very good information now to close out the video I want to talk about motivation I want to talk about uh, that your life uh, number one all of us me and you you who I'm talking to you can be uh, just as good as anybody else no one is better than you no one is more talented talented than you and you're no more talented to, than anybody else. The only difference is that uh, you have to become more aware uh, of yourself. You have to understand that your success is going to look different than my success. Uh, your success is going to look different than someone else's success on something that you want to do. So if you're a sports player, if you want to be in business, you can be just as successful as anyone else. It's just that you have to have in your mind and understand that your success won't look like that person's success. That's where we get trapped. That's where we, uh, one of the biggest mistakes we make. And I believe we run into that because we're like the person, if the person is coaching us or we want to be like that person. So we're trying to follow like that person. And then when our success doesn't look exactly like theirs, we think that we failed when all we have to understand is that my success my success, listen to me, my success, your success is just going to look different. But in the end, you are successful. You are successful. Don't use words like I will be successful. You are successful and you step into your su success now and you act successful because when you become successful, you will be that person of success so you are already successful and one of the best ways that I do to compartmentalize myself to understand that uh, success that I am successful and to teach other people that they could be successful is to compartmentalize everything that you do understand that one thing has nothing to do with the other Consequences come from certain things, but when you're dealing with a problem, you're dealing with a problem. And when you're dealing with success, you're dealing with success. And each individual uh, thing that is happening is separate. Do not combine them. So let me give you an example. If a person is going through a problem with, but let me give you, let me just tell you a real life uh, something I'm dealing with right now, something that I'm dealing with right now. 
two I'm selling a property that I have the uh, home uh, it was a, a rental um, I'm jumping more into technology and other stuff and I don't want to do real estate anymore I'm just going to be keeping my office building in my uh, home that that my wife and I have that's that's it and um, so we're selling off our rental properties and we have a property that we've made very good income from uh, 1100 bucks a month that we were making it for five years we only had for the whole five I think five and a half years probably only two months no one was in there had very little expenses I think the roof was the only major expense five thousand dollars so you're talking eleven hundred dollars times twelve times let's just say five sixty six thousand dollars we bought the house for sixty five thousand dollars and so we put five thousand in there so we're at seventy one and we sold the house for eighty five uh, eighty I think eighty six my wife handles the real estate I think we sold it for eighty six thousand dollars uh, there's no mortgage or anything on the house. It, it, we paid it in in cash. Uh, so we're I'm waiting to get my check for uh, I think after the closing and everything was like a little uh, over eighty thousand dollars, and the deal didn't. It, it's approved, but something happened with the deal last week. With the appraisal didn't get there on time. Then they moved it to this week, and now. The lender that the uh, that the uh, buyers are using, there's something that they want fixed in the house that they could have told us a long, t you know, way back, and it's not, it's something minor, but it just make clogs up the deal. Now, if I was to just get depressed about that, about not having that closed. Letting that wipe over into me making this important video about medical bills with you to saying, oh, I don't feel like doing it uh, or having an attitude when I'm dealing with my employees or having a uh, trying to blame it on other things, uh, you know, and letting it just roll downhill. That's what I'm talking about when you have to com compartmentalize. That has nothing to do with the way that I deal with everything else. It has nothing to do with the value that I, of this content that I want to give to you. It, 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 it's something that's going on, but it, has, it, sh it should not affect the way that I deal with other people. It should not affect the way that I move forward with everything else that I got to do in my life. But what people do is that when something goes bad, they let it wipe over the whole day and they just get to rolling downhill and it's like everything is going bad because what will happen to you is that what you ask your mind to see, your mind will give to you, it will, it will uh, your reality will be manipulated to give you that outcome. So when, if you, to get rid of things that are happening to you negative you have to put them in a little box and say okay that's what's going on in that box and then you have to get yourself out of that box and then you have to move forward with the other things that you have to do i know that that drop my pen i know that that's tough to do because i find myself even uh running into it to you know to now i have to but i make a conscious uh a decision to pull myself out of it and I start thinking on the positives because everything is a, a learning uh, lesson that you can use for something else so I hope I was clear on that if you uh, have any questions about medical bills please post your comments uh, please subscribe to my page I want to continue uh, giving you valuable information on how you can deal with your credit repair issues uh, and with this one specifically, we're dealing with medical bills. This is Stephen Williams, founder and president of the CreditRepairShop.com. I really thank you for your time. And until next time, uh, thank you and have a great day.